Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and I'm at my alma mater, Cali County College. I've got the welding instructor here, his name is Bob Moffat, and we've been here before doing different tests and experiments. And today we're gonna to show several different things. One of those is walking the cup. And we get asked that a lot. What is walking the cup? Why do you walk the cup? Is it a cool thing? Is it a bad thing? Uh, I've asked Bob to help me out because he's, uh, he's heavy into walking the cup. And I want your interpretation, your definition of what walking the cup is. Okay. Um, to, me, to me, anything where you're resting the cup into a groove or on the material, to me, that is walking the cup. Now, some people may argue with that. That's, that's fine. Uh, but to me, if I'm sliding this in this groove in order to facilitate making the weld, to me, that is, that's the definition of walking the cup. Just like being out here on the outside of the material, the cup is touching the material, and I'm just doing a lazy figure eight. And that's moving by itself. I'm not pushing on it. Matter of fact, I don't want to push on it. And in reality, this is going to sound really strange, but if I'm doing a small tube like this and I'm out here on the last pass, I'm actually pulling down as I'm going up. I know that sounds strange and it's very subtle, but that motion, you know, I'm hanging on to this real light. I don't put a death grip on a TIG torch at all. I want to be able to move smooth consistently uh, and again that's that's me and my personal preference you know but to me when I get up here on the side of a piece of pipe if I'm pushing in this direction I take a big chance of coming along here and slipping you know some of you've done that I know I've done it okay the the nice thing is when you're on your weld bead and you're resting your cup and you're walking it if you actually pull backwards just a little bit, it gives you enough friction that the cup will stay where you want it to stay. So I'm actually pulling backwards toward me and I'm going forward. I know that seems opposite. Well, Bob, Bob when, when do works. you decide if you're going to walk the cup or not walk the cup? What's your determining factors? My, my overall determining factors, I want it. What's the specification of the weld? That's the number one key factor is what are the specifications of the weld. My number two thing is speed, quality, consistency, and not necessarily in that order. I'd say quality and consistency and then speed as a factor. Um, let's take, for instance, um, if you came to me and said, I have a hundred of these items here and I need you to put a TIG weld across here, a small fillet weld. Am I gonna walk the cup on this? No, I'm not even gonna consider it. Number one fact is, I can't start over here on the corner and start walking my cup on the material. Um, let's take another part. Let's take something of a structural member here. This is a, a couple of different sized tubings, one square, one rectangular. This happens to be a part for uh, mounting double glass doors. If I had a bunch of these parts to make, I'm not going to walk the cup. I don't even want to consider it. Uh, you know, what are the specs of the weld? The weld probably needs to be an eighth of an inch, a real small weld. If I had a great big weld to do, even, even this, you know, I could probably get away with it. I don't know that I could do it as fast and as consistent as I'd like to be able to do. I want things to be, I want, the, I want the quality. So to me, you know, where's the decision to walk the cup? Uh, specifications of the weld. You know, here's, here's where it would be fun. Uh, let's get on a piece of 10 inch heavy wall. We have a root pass put in here and we've got part of a fill pass done with gas metal arc welding just to, just to start filling it up. Um, if I had to finish this weld, it's going to take numerous passes. Uh, I would probably get one of the biggest cups that I have here with a big gas lens 
and I would probably rest this in here and do all my subsequent fill passes until I get it up here to flush. And then I would probably grab a larger diameter filler wire or even two, sometimes three. Somebody's gonna comment on that, about that <laughs> falling back into a code. Um, and then I would, you know, this size groove, I'd be real interested in doing two stringer beads walking the cup on my bead, because that's a wide gap. That'd be something that I'd be interested in. Again, uh, you know, what are the specs? What's the code? What's what's the what's the job sheet call for? You know. So those are the things that I would probably take into consideration. And and so so small, just just because you know how to do it very well doesn't mean you do it every time. Oh, there, no. There's a functional reason oh. why you do it. The cool factor really doesn't matter. <laughs> the cool factor doesn't matter. <laughs> Guarantee you, when you get on a big piece of pipe. Uh, if you're walking the cup, you're going to save time. A highly skilled operator mm -hmm. can lace that weld in there and make it look really, really mm -hmm. good um, and, and, and be quicker than somebody that's over here dabbing and trying to weave and, and doing it by hand, plus the consistency. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of really good welds. I'll give a shout out to Alex Brown right now, a caveman welder on Instagram. I know that we did a video and he hit me up via email and text and he was really curious and this gentleman spent a lot of time under the hood and I'm amazed at some of the quality of the stuff that he's putting down he can he can flat fly he's got some why we uh, we were talking about when to walk the cup and and I had picked this piece here you wanted to see a demonstration on how to how to rest the cup in this groove here and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a fill pass in this Okay. And I've, I have the root pass and I have enough of a fill in here that I'm going to weld pretty hot. Matter of fact, I'm at 200 amps and I've got a piece of 532nd uh, ER70S6. Okay. So I want to keep the filler wire on the leading edge of the pool. I am watching to see that I'm not creating a, a, a cold spot or overlapping a bunch of filler metal in here. I just want to keep this on the leading edge and watch this flow and progress. Okay. So I see you've got a 1 8 inch tungsten pointed. I have a 1 8 inch tungsten. I went ahead and changed to a large diameter gas lens to facilitate this cut because, again, this is a pretty good, this is a pretty big groove. Okay. What, what's uh, your gas flow I coming? wouldn't be getting this done with a number five cup on a, on a regular collet body. I went ahead and changed to the big gas lens. Okay, what, what do you have your gas flow set at? I have my gas flow set at 20, 25. Okay, 100% argon? 100% argon. Straight polarity, 2% thoriated tungsten. Okay. All right, here we go. So we've initiated the arc, and I have my pool. I set this rod on the leading edge. And again, I'm just, you know, lazily walking back and forth. I'm not worried about this weld pool being so hot that I'm rearranging my, uh, my root pass. And by going back and forth and slipping this cup along here, you can see that this makes kind of its own little figure eight. I think one of the comments that was uh, that was made at one point in time was, why do we crawl up on the side of a pipe when we terminate our weld? Yep. Well, most of the time we're not in the shop using the foot pedal. We're out in the field and we're running off of an engine drive. We don't have the luxury of a foot pedal. So you're electrically hot all the time. You have a manual gas valve back here on your torch. And so when you go to terminate your, your weld, Last thing I want to do is just stop, you know, with hot metal, if I just stop, it, it tends to, it tends to shrink so fast that it makes a hole or a crack in here in your weld, especially in the, especially in the root and the fill pass. It's the last mm -hmm. thing you want to do. So a good habit 
is to bring it up here on the side. You have more mass up here on the side, so you kind of bring it up here and taper out of your arc. There's two ways to do it. You can increase your arc length and snap out of it if you're on a on a unit that you don't have a remote control, or you can bring it up here and decrease your amperage with your foot control. But it's just a it's just a good habit to get into. Um, again, we've put a little bit of a fill pass in here, and you can see that it kind of makes its own pattern. Uh, from here on up, if I was if I had to leave this in position, I would turn the torch over and continue on. It's just a comfortable angle. And again, we're just turning this back and forth and we're gently resting the cup in here. When we get this all filled up here after a while, when we go to put the cap in, then we're gonna be resting the cup onto the weld metal that's up here on the top and we're gonna put our cap in. So. Well, for those of you who are asking about walking the cup, there you have it. So Bob, thanks for letting us come in and, and show us the right technique. And thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.